What's up everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Richard on Data. If this is your first time here, my name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this, and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. All right, so a while ago, I did a video on how much statistics you need to know for data science. I laid out a lot of different things, and as anyone who's been in the field for a long time will tell you, statistics is a critically important component of data science, and there's a lot of concepts you need to be educated on in order to do effective applied data science. But I think it raises a pretty natural follow-up question, which is, how much pure math do you need for data science? My two-second answer to that is, probably not as much as you think. In fact, one of the most iconic books on machine learning is Introduction to Statistical Learning with Applications in R, and there are almost no references to calculus in the whole book. So broadly speaking, the kind of math that most people should have some knowledge of for data science is going to fall into two major categories. Those are calculus and linear algebra. So I'm going to walk through how math can manifest inside your data science role, exactly how understanding it can be useful, and then those two topics, calculus and linear algebra, individually. As a usual disclaimer, all of this is based on my own experiences, anecdotes from people in my network, and some research I've done. So hopefully it provides you with some helpful food for thought, and who knows, maybe even a little bit of entertainment. But before I do any of that, there's one distinction that should be made, and that's the difference between practical data science and the theory behind all of it. And I'm going to have a link in the description to an article that does a pretty good job of breaking down that distinction. But in short, most people who do practical data science work are making use of things which have been around for a while. Those could be statistical methods like t-tests, regression, or machine learning algorithms like k-nearest neighbors, random forest, neural networks, doesn't matter. Here's the thing, you're using all of those methods because they've been around for decades, or sometimes even longer than decades, and somebody before you in the past has discovered that under the right circumstances, these things all work so that you don't have to. For a huge number of people, you don't really need to do all that much math because especially if you're using open source software like R or Python, guess what? The math is already implemented. Like any rule though, that does have exceptions. I once knew a guy who wrote a full-blown logistic regression model using gradient descent with full feature and model selection from scratch using pure C-sharp, because that's the only way we could deploy such a model to production given our client's security requirements. I don't think I need to tell you that that requires a lot of math to do that. Honestly, most people though are not going to have to do stuff like that. But I do think it's fair to say that if you have none of the mathematical foundation at all, it is going to impair your ability to interpret what you do and communicate about it pretty dramatically. Take a method like principal component analysis, for example. You may use this as an intermediary, so you pass the principal components into a predictive model, or you may just use it for exploratory purposes. Either way, somebody may very well ask you what it means. Now, if you don't understand any of the math behind what you've done, it's going to be way harder to explain your work to others. Similarly, it'll happen a lot more often that you run a model or a method and there's just weird issues with it. Like maybe you run a random forest and the variable importance plot looks a lot different than you expected, and you're looking at the predictive performance thinking, this should be doing a lot better than this. If you don't know the underlying math, you're going to run into problems like that, and it's going to be harder and take a lot more time to fix them. And while I think for most people, implementing full-blown algorithms from scratch might be a little bit of a stretch, I don't think it's too stretchy to occasionally have to come up with your own solutions that are based on solid mathematical and statistical principles. That's especially true if you work on any kind of optimization problem. So now that I've gone through why you might need to know math and data science, let's go through some of the fundamentals. For starters, as far as statistics is concerned, you need to understand probability calculations and especially conditional probability. But I talk all about that in my how much statistics do you really need for data science video. There's going to be a card for that up above as well as a link to that in the description. As far as your algebra basics are concerned, the most key expressions are going to be logarithms and exponents. 
These show up in the theory behind tons of different methods, and even in more basic things like the densities of distributions. Euclidean geometry is important too because it gives a solid foundation for tons of different mathematical thinking, but it will also help you understand algorithms like k-nearest neighbor or k-means clustering. Then you're also going to want to know some basic sequence and series. So data science, and particularly machine learning, is full of summation notation. And this stuff, even if you hated learning it as much as I did in school, it is going to come in handy and be your friend sometimes. Now let's talk about calculus. So the key topics from here are limits, derivatives, and integrals. In particular, the real world is complex and has a lot going on, so all of these are going to apply in multivariate contexts, that is, functions with multiple variables. Computation of derivatives, in particular, often requires use of the product or chain rules. So sorry to those of you who are sitting in your starter calculus class and you remember thinking, when am I ever going to need to use this? But more generally with machine learning, it is critically important to understand the concept of gradient descent. And to understand that, you kind of have to understand partial derivatives, as well as the difference between local and global maxima and minima. Then for integrals, those are probably a little bit less important, but it could be helpful to understand multiple integrals, as well as the gamma and beta functions. But overall though, it is highly unlikely that you're going to have to do a ton of calculus in your data science job. And for most people, I think if you understand the surface level stuff, you're going to be just fine. Once again though, I do highly recommend reading all about gradient descent if you're unfamiliar with it, and understanding all the math that goes into it. It will pay massive dividends for understanding the intuition behind machine learning algorithms, as well as explaining them to other people. Now we move on to linear algebra, and I gotta admit on this one, this was an early pain point for me back when I was in college. So calculus always intuitively made sense to me, but I did horribly in my first linear algebra class. Sorry to say, but if it's really abstract for you, it is a hill that you have to climb. But once you climb that hill, you'll be extremely glad that you did. Linear algebra revolves around vectors and matrices, and you're obviously going to need to know how to do matrix algebra. So things like matrix addition, matrix multiplication, as well as the transpose of a matrix. Solving systems of linear equations, as well as inverting matrices, are going to be useful skills to have, and your tool for that is going to be Gauss-Jordan elimination. And then generally, one of the most important concepts in all of linear algebra is that of the determinant. This is something that shows up in the theory behind tons of different algorithms, so knowing how to calculate it as well as the overall intuition behind it is not only important, but it's going to give you a huge aha moment as it comes to understanding a lot of the different mathematical ideas in linear algebra in general. Concepts like bases, the span of vectors, and linear dependence and independence are important as well. Now these things will help you understand the role that multicollinearity, as well as the assumption of linear independence, plays in regression models. Then you also want to understand eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and singular value decomposition. Coming back to principal component analysis, as well as several other dimensionality reduction techniques, the entire mathematical foundation for them is based on these concepts. So if you take the time to really learn and understand these concepts, it's really one of the highest return on investment things that you could do if you're learning math for data science. Now naturally, this is not a comprehensive list. And in particular, if your role or interests skew more in the direction of data engineering, you may benefit from knowing some discrete math. Similarly, if you have a lot of interest in neural networks and deep learning, knowing some graph theory and real analysis is going to serve you well too. But I really do think for most people, a lot of these simply aren't things which you're going to be making use of every single day. The basics are obviously going to help you out, but especially in a field as broad as data science, I really think that studying some of these things extensively is going to have some level of diminishing marginal returns. Remember, this is a field where things like communication and domain expertise and being a solid programmer are all important skills to have as well. And overall, math is wonderful because it's going to be around forever. If we look back at the last few decades, the programming languages of choice have shifted around dramatically, but the foundations of math haven't. 
New methods will come along in the future too, I'm sure, but they will all to some extent rely on the same mathematical foundation that older statistical methods did. But don't be intimidated by all the people out there who make giant listings of all the math that you need to know for data science. Again, if you know all the fundamentals, maybe you've taken some classes in the past, and you have some resources to consult for looking things up, I think you're going to do just fine. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to support my work, the most helpful thing that you could do for me would be to share this video. Otherwise, at least consider smashing the like button. And then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.